I broke the tip. Those stupid pencils. But what other option do I have? Hello, I'm Kyle, and welcome back to Bedtime Versus with Kyle. Just a little poetry to help you get ready for bed. Also, right, follow me on YouTube, at the Kyle Derrick. Uh, and the Blessed, get it? It's great, I promise. Tell me about it. Okay, so today we have a parade upstairs. That's good, that means that they're alive. And uh, we have a new poet named Abraham Cowley, or Abraham Cowley. Let's go with Cowley. 1618 to 1677. A youngish fellow when he kicks it. Uh, we have our first piece called The Wish. The Wish. Well then, I now do plainly see this busy world and I shall never agree. The very honey of all earthly joy does of all meats the soonest cloy. And they, methinks, deserve my pity, who for it can endure the stings, the crowd and buzz and murmurings of this great hive, the city. Don't like the city. It's much smellier, much smellier back then. Like, just... Anyway. Ah, yet, ere I descend to the grave, may I a small house and large garden have. Well, can't we relate to that? And a few friends, and many books, both true, both wise, and both delightful, too. Well, now you're speaking to half the internet. And since love never will from me flee, a mistress moderately fair. Yeah, moderate, okay. And good as guardian angels are, only beloved and loving me. Yeah, you know, you can't have everything, I guess. Oh, fountains! When in you shall I myself eased of unpeaceful thoughts espy? Oh, fields, oh, woods! When, when shall I be made the happy tenant of your shade? Here's the springhead of pleasure's flood. Here's wealthy nature's treasury, where all the riches lie that she hath coined and stamped for good. Pride and ambition here only in far-fetched metaphors appear. Here not but winds can hurtful murmurs scatter, and not but echo flatter. The gods, when they descended hither, from heaven did always choose their way, and therefore we may boldly say, that tis the way to thither. How happy here should I and one dear she live and embracing die. She who is all the world and can exclude in desert solitude. I should have them this only fear. Lest men, when they my pleasure see, should hither throng to live like me. And so make a city here. <laughs> there you go. I just want to get away. Give me a woman, some books, some friends, a house and a garden. I'm sure many people are feeling that, especially since the uh, the imprisonment of COVID. That's actually that's that's pretty cute. Eh? It's like ah, cities, just get me out of here, man. Just give me some trees. How many of you feel that way? I would like the house, but I tell you, living outside of the city, I'd probably lose it. I need the uh, I need the like I like having the place of solitude, but like I need the the, the bustle and the, the activity and the things and the and the women especially. You just don't get that in the countryside. They don't grow on trees. That stuff doesn't grow on trees out there. Okay, today we're back with Adam Cowley, who impressed us very much with his disdain for cities, even though I don't agree. And now he has another song called Drinking, which once upon a time was something dear to my heart until I turned into an old man and couldn't do it anymore. Here we go. <clears throat> the thirsty earth soaks up the rain. And drinks the gapes. No! It's like I've been drinking while reading this. I have not. I'm totally sober. I like the day. The thirsty earth soaks up the rain. And drinks and gapes for drink again. The plants suck in the earth and are, with constant drinking, fresh and fair. The sea itself, which one would think should have but little need of drink, drinks ten thousand rivers up, so filled that they overflow the cup. The busy sun, and one would guess by his drunken, fiery face, no less, drinks up the sea, and when he's done, the moon and stars drink up the sun. They drink and dance by their own light, they drink and revel all the night. Nothing in nature's sober found, but an eternal health goes round. Fill up the bowl, then, fill it high. Fill all the glasses there, for why should every creature drink but I? Why, man of morals, tell me why? I love this, but can't endorse it. Drinking is bad for you. It is. It's bad for you. It ruins your hormones, makes you older, can give you cancer. You can, uh, as a speaker, it causes reflux. You know, a good drink, though, every once in a while. Very nice, very nice. I like this Abraham Cowley. He's got a good sense of humor. Atta boy.
Might have been a drunk. Wait, is that why he died so young? No, he wasn't so young. He wasn't so young. Don't forget to check me out as Drago and Bakugan, and uh, The Blessed is available at Amazon, helping off the route. Tell me what you think. <clears throat> okay, so we're back with more Abraham Cowley, and uh, this one's a little sad. It's on the death of Mr. William Harvey, who was his best friend. Okay. It was a dismal and a fearful night. Scarce could the morn drive on the unwilling light. When sleep, death's image, left my troubled breast by something like her death possessed. My eyes with tears did uncommanded flow, and on my soul hung the dull weight of some intolerable fate. What bell was that? Ah, me, too much I know. My sweet companion and my gentle peer, why hast thou left me thus unkindly here? Thy end forever and my life to moan. Ah, thou hast left me all alone, thy soul and body, when death's agony besieged around thy noble heart, did not with more reluctance part than I, my dearest friend, to part from thee. My dearest friend, would I had died for thee, life in this world henceforth will tedious be, nor shall I know hereafter what to do, if once my griefs prove tedious too. Silent and sad I walk about all day, as sullen ghosts stalk speechless by where their hid treasures lie. Alas, my treasure's gone. Why do I stay? He was my friend, the truest friend on earth. A strong and mighty influence joined our birth. Nor did we envy the most sounding name by friendship given of old to fame. None but his brethren he and sisters knew whom the kind youth preferred to me. And even in that we did agree, for much above myself I love them too. Say, for you saw us, ye immortal lights, how oft unwearied have we spent the nights, till the Ladian stars, so famed for love, wondered at us from above. Ladian, yeah, Lida, Lida stars, the swan. We spent them not in toys and lusts or wine, but search of deep philosophy, wit, eloquence, and poetry, arts which I loved, for they, my friend, were thine. Ye fields of Cambridge, our dear Cambridge, say, have ye not seen us walking every day? Was there a tree about which did not know the love betwixt us two? Henceforth ye gentle trees forever fade, or your sad branches thicker join, and into darksome shades combine. Dark is the grave wherein my friend is laid. That's sad. That's sad. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah, Abraham Cowley is a, is a good poet. Very good. A new poet, Richard Lovelace. 1618 to 1657, another relatively young one. Uh, how does he compare to Abraham Cowley? 1358. Well, dang, young. Okay, the grasshopper to my noble friend, Mr. Charles Cotton. Oh, thou that swingst upon the waving hair of some well-filled oaten beard, drunk every night with a delicious tear. Drop thee from heaven, where now thou art reared. I think delicious tear. Drunk every night with a delicious tear. Drop thee from heaven, where now thou art reared. The joys of earth and air are thine entire, that with thy feet and wings dost hop and fly. And when thy poppy works, thou dost retire to thy carved acorn bed to lie. Up with the day, the sun thou welcomest then, sportst in the gilt plates of his beams, and all these merry days makest merry men, thyself, and melancholy streams. But ah, the sickle, golden ears are cropped, Ceres and Bacchus bid good night, sharp frosty fingers all your flowers have topped, and what scythes spared, winds shaved off quite. Poor verdant fool, and now green ice, thy joys, large and as lasting as thy perch of grass, bid us lay in gainst winter rain and poise their floods with an o'erflowing glass. <laughs> Thou best of men and friends, we will create a genuine summer in each other's breast, in spite of this cold time and frozen fate, thaw us a warm seat to our rest. Our sacred hearths shall burn eternally, as vestal flames, the north wind he shall strike his frost-stretched wings, dissolve and fly this Etna in epitome. Dropping December shall come weeping in, bewail the usurping of his reign. But when in showers of old Greek we begin, shall cry he hath his crown again. Night as clear as Hesper shall our tapers whip from the light casements where we play, and the dark hag from her black mantle strip and stick their everlasting day. Thus richer than untempered kings are we that asking nothing, nothing need. 
Though Lord of all what sees embrace, yet he that wants himself is poor indeed. Well, see that he want that wants himself is poor indeed. To my noble friend. Well, there you go. His friend the grasshopper. Apparently he uh, likes to frolic. And then winter comes along and it's terrible, which it is. And I'm about to enter on that right now. And I'm very, very upset. So uh, if anyone wants to set me up in Mexico from, say, December to March, you let me know. I'm in. I am in. Today is Flip to Friday. Now, we did Coriolanus last week, and that was great. Ophidius, fire, drives out fire, something like that. And uh, Charles and Cressida. I hate this play. It is... It's like a parody of the Trojan War. And I like the Trojan War, and it's just everyone's a just jerk-off loser, and I don't care about anyone. Cressida is a trollop. Troilus is a dink. And then all the great heroes are just made fun of. Uh, it's so stupid. But we flipped to it. So what can we read? Not worth a blackberry. Oh, Samsung goes that far back. Ha 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 ha, no. Nestor, okay. So yeah, so act five. No, let's find something else. Uh, Trinus and Chris, uh, You tell the savage strangers. So they're trying to woo Achilles. That they say is just like a big fat lazy guy. Oh, that pisses me off so much. Okay. Blee, 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 blee. Is there any? Come on! Is there any good part of this play? Okay. You know what? Fine. Here. Okay. A Aeneas. Aeneas is describing Hector to Agamemnon. Okay. Great. Now, there's a big speech by Ulysses. Degrees in schools. Uh, you know what? Maybe. I've been down the great. Okay. You know what? Okay, here we go. So Ulysses has a big speech on why the world's crap, I believe. Let's find out. All right. <clears throat> Troy, yet upon his basis, had been down, and the great Hector's sword had lacked a master, but for these instances. So Troy would already be down, except these are the problems. The specialty of rule hath been neglected. And look how many Grecian tents do stand hollow upon this plain. So many hollow factions, when that the general is not like the hive to whom the foragers shall all repair. What honey is expected? Degree being visited. The unworthiest shows as fairly in the mask. There's a line missing. Okay. The heavens themselves, the planets, and the center observe degree, priority, and place. In fixture, course, proportion, season, form, office, and custom, in all line of order, and therefore is the glorious planet Sol, which is actually the sun, in noble eminence, enthroned and sphered, amidst the other, whose medicinable eye corrects the ill aspects of planets evil, and posts like the commandment of a king. Sans check to good and bad. So the sun is awesome, organized, blah, 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 blah. But when the planets in evil mixture to disorder wander, what plagues and what plagues and what portents, what mutiny, what raging of the sea, shaking of earth, commotion in the winds, fights, changes, horrors, divert and crack, rend and deracinate the unity and married calm of states quite from their fixture. Oh, when degree is shaked, which is the ladder to all high designs, the enterprise is sick. How could communities, degrees in schools, and brotherhoods in cities, peaceful commerce from dividable shores, the primogenity and due of birth, prerogative of age, crowns, scepters, laurels, but by degree stand in authentic place, take but degree away, untune that string, and hark what discord follows, each thing meets in mere repugnancy. The bounded waters should lift their bosoms higher than the shores and make a sop of all this solid globe. Strength should be lord of imbecility, and the rude son should strike his father dead. Force should be right, or rather, right and wrong, between whose endless jar justice resides, should lose their names, and so should justice too. Then everything includes itself in power, power into will, will into appetite, and appetite and universal wolf, so doubly seconded with will and power, must make perforce an universal prey, and last eat up himself. 
Great Agamemnon, this chaos when degree is suffocate follows the choking, and this neglection of degree it is that by a pace goes backward in a purpose it hath to climb. The generals sustained by him one step below, he by the next, that next by him beneath. So every step, exampled by the first pace that is sick of his superior, grows to an envious fever of pale and bloodless emulation. And tis this fever that keeps Troy on foot, not her own sinews. To end the tale of length, Troy in our weakness lives, not in her strength. Okay, and he goes on and on and on, but... All right, so that's, you know, this is the old argument, everything in their order, and there is something to this, degree, right? Well, if no one respects a king, then no one respects the duke, and the duke and blah, 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 goes all the way down and causes disorder, which is kind of true, right? You look at the uh, broken window uh, hypothesis, and it seems to be borne out by the data. In a neighborhood where windows are broken, no one has any respect for anything. And then it just spreads, and from a personal account, I can tell you, someone who runs shows and directs and uh, runs casts, you know, uh, they, uh, you're the model. And the way you behave is the way everyone else behaves. And the same with film sets and all these things. So, of course, the danger here is like, well, respect the Nobel guy because he was born that way, right? So we no longer believe that nobility is from your bloodline. Though I believe nobility is innate, but I don't think it's because of who your parents are. I think it's because of who you are. And, and so he talks about... Uh, the seas overstepping their bounds. That's exactly what's happening over my head. There's water everywhere. Uh, yeah, so without degree, if nothing knows its place, nothing has any place, which is true. But of course, the inverse of that is that you could also use this speech to uh, get people to do what you want. Be like, hey, look, I'm in power. These people are in power. If you don't listen to exactly what they say, it's chaos. Chaos. Uh, but he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, what's the good line here? Is there one line that sums it up? It's the... Must make himself... What do I say? What raging... Yeah, the sun. Mm -hmm. No, it's, they're all spread out. There's not quite one line. Okay, actually, oh, here we go. Take but degree away, untune that string, and hark what discord follows. There you go. Hark what Discord follows. And it's true. Anyway, uh, interesting, interesting. Even though I hate this play, that's uh, that's an interesting speech. Thanks again for joining me for Bedtime Versus with Kyle. You can follow me here. Please subscribe to my YouTube, and there'll be new readings every weekday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>